Go into the word. Let's go into the word. Everybody turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm excited, uh, ecstatic even about what is about to take place. We've been preaching over the last couple weeks about kingdom, about kingdom, and, um, and that we asked a couple questions last week, several actually, and one of those big questions was, what is the purpose of our salvation? Why do we even get saved? And, and in Bible study, one of the answers was to go to heaven. Um, but I, I wanted to challenge that in conversation, and I said, I think the reason we get saved, the reason our major responsibility as representatives of the kingdom is to help expand the kingdom. I've talked about several times over the last several weeks that our job, our responsibility is to, one, be educated on the kingdom, and then to expand the kingdom. Everybody say educate. Say expand. All right? And so um, so I wanted to, to uh, talk today from this particular passage, Matthew 13, and it reads like this, 33. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like. Everybody say like. All right, that's going to be significant. The yeast a woman used in making bread, even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated. Everybody say permeated. Every part of the dough. It, it permeated through every part of the dough. It permeated through every part of the dough. It permeated through every part of the dough. I want to preach today now. Say it a little bit last sermon. Uh, it's going to seem left field for just a little bit, but everybody say, pull it down, pull it down. Say it a little bit louder because your friend went to sleep right next to you. Say, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Okay, good, good stuff, good stuff. I remember as a child, I remember as a child, I remember as a child, I really do, I remember as a child, um, that, that sometimes I would be asked to get things that were beyond my reach. Uh, I was short, go figure. Um, and, and, and so all my short people make some noise, right? <laughs> Right, okay, okay. Because it's nothing like people, tall people being around you and asking you to get stuff that they know you can't reach. I'm like, hey, you'll pass me that. You know I can't reach that. Right? Uh, and, and so, and so, and so I remember, I remember as a child, my father, my father, Abba, my Abba, uh, he sent me, he sent me to, to, to the closet to get something uh, that, that, that I could not reach. I could not reach. And, and he said, pull it down. And I said, but, 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 but daddy, I, I, I can't reach it. And, and he said, son, you, you, you can reach it. You just have to go find something to help you. There's a step stool somewhere. And, you know, in our house, the step stool was always lost. But, but once I found the step stool, it's going to sound simple, real, real simple punchline. I was able to pull down what I needed. Okay, make it real simple for you. Uh, uh, I think sometimes what's hard about Christianity is the thing that we feel like we need to pull down, that, that hope, that victory, that that peace, those things that represent the kingdom, that joy, that kindness, that love, that, that ability to be forgiving, that ability to love beyond our hatred, all those things. We want to pull it down, but we feel like it's beyond our reach. And so what Jesus does is Jesus comes and connects with us. Jesus comes in and partners with us to help us pull down what we thought was unreachable. He, 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 he comes to earth to teach us about the step stool. I, I, I want to look at the kingdom today as a step stool. Use this one. This is loud. I don't like this one. We we'll change the battery again. <laughs> it's a step stool. It's a step stool. I love the step stool. I love the step stool because the step stool will help people who are incapable of reaching certain things pull them down. And, and, and recently, I thought this was just going to be a childhood issue until my wife asked me to pull something down. That I could not reach. Now, it's one thing when you're a kid and you're explaining to your father, I can't reach it. It's another thing when you're grown, married, and you know, low key, it's a little pressure because she wants me to be the man of the house. Like my height changed because we got married. And so she kept asking me to, 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 to do this filter thing to change it, and I kept telling her, I can't reach it. And then, I walked through the living room the other day, and as if God said, boy, here goes your sermon, she was standing doing my job on a step stool. Can I suggest that, that part of the reason that the kingdom has lost its effectiveness, that, that the kingdom is not attractive to culture, 
the reason why why we're not attracting people who who are afraid of church or people who have had bad experiences is because we have become lazy in reaching up and getting the things that heaven is trying to bring to earth. And so what happens is other people are being the community advocates and other people are loving on the homeless and other people are helping the sick and other people are walking around with the kids who are in the most trouble, but we don't have the time. We, we, we don't have the, the resources. We, our schedule is too busy. Our time is too valuable. And so other organizations and other entities and other people and other practices have come along and said, we will do the reaching that you refuse to do. To preach. And here's where Jesus appears in this particular passage. Jesus appears to preach a message of the kingdom and a step stool. But let me take two steps back because I think it's important that we understand we understand the context of what Jesus is doing here. Can I, can I just tell you a little bit about what Jesus is doing? If we go back to the passage that we've been reading every week, we're going to read it every week. I preach on this sermon series. Uh, it's the Lord's Prayer. Let's all say it together again. Our Father, which... All right, let's pause this. So now we talked about this. I'm going to mess up some of y'all because y'all can only do it in rhythm. So I'm going to tell y'all to start where y'all stop. And y'all can be like, no, I got to do it from the beginning. I got to do it from the beginning. I got to do it from the beginning. Right? Right? But, 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 but it's important, right, because, because we, we just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Again, our kingdom come, thy will be done, what, on earth as it is in. So our responsibility as kingdom representatives, he said, when you pray, pray that we pull down something from heaven to earth. Our responsibility Our goal, the goal of our salvation was not just heaven. The goal of our salvation was to be able to expand the kingdom message. What does that look like? It is pulling down heaven's systems and heaven's practices and heaven's love and heaven's grace and heaven's enjoyment. It is pulling that down from heaven onto the earth. Let's pick up where we left off. (laughs) Oh, boy, some of y'all. Only like eight of y'all. Everybody else was waiting for the other eight people to start like, this day our daily bread. I know it, too. It's like that designer panda song. We can't sing it, but y'all know. We don't know nothing but the end line. Uh, No, no. Talk about it later. So give us this day our daily bread. Okay, for thine is the what? The what? And the what? All right, now I think this is significant because it frames our entire conversation. This Lord's Prayer is so significant. The disciples only ask Jesus to teach them one thing. They never say, Jesus, teach us how to do miracles. They never say, Jesus, teach us. He, he says, the one thing he te- to teach us how to do, Jesus, is pray. And when he teaches them to pray, he teaches them about kingdom responsibility. Now, now we've talked about the beginning part. Let's look at the end. For thine. Thine was an ancient word for yours. So for yours is the kingdom and the power of agreement and the glory forever amen. Let's go backwards. Amen is a term of agreement. So whenever you say amen in church, you shouldn't just be saying it because the pastor said everybody say amen. No, you should be in agreement with what is being said. If you're not in agreement, then amen is not a sincere term. Amen is a term of agreement. So, So what they're saying at the end of this prayer is, Jesus, we agree with the responsibility you've given us. What is the responsibility? So first of all, your kingdom. We're bringing your kingdom. What is kingdom? Systems. So look at this in order. He says, for yours is the kingdom, the systems, the practices that are going to help us live a successful and prosperous life in you, right? Yours is the kingdom and the power. What does the kingdom do? It produces power. If you try to get success without systems, you'll fail. It works in every other aspect of life, but we want it to work in kingdom. Think about it. You cannot not be obedient or, or submissive to the system of your job and think you're going to be successful. If the system is showing up on time, which most of our jobs have that as a system, you can't expect, expect success if you don't honor the system. For many of us, we want to we wanna be entrepreneurs. You, you cannot expect success if you don't save. It's a part of the system. They'd be like, put up some upfront capital. I don't got nothing. Well, you just have a hope. You have faith. But faith with no system does not produce success. 
it, it, it's important that we understand that what Jesus is trying to get us to understand is that there is a kingdom system that will bring joy to your life. He's trying to show us the system of relationships. Oh, boy, y'all quiet on this side. And then we operate outside of the system, and they get frustrated when we don't experience success. Because we wanted something outside of the kingdom system. He said, understand, I'm trying to help you understand kingdom system, systems. Once you understand the systems, it produces power. Now your relationship is stronger. Now your job security is stronger. Now your, 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 your dream is becoming fruition. Now some things are happening even when you go to the gym. If you don't work out in a system. You ever seen people in the gym that, that you know they don't know what they're doing? I mean, tell me it's not the most hilarious thing in the world. I mean, they just picking up stuff. They didn't, win, they didn't work chest, triceps, <laughs> back. All, it just, what, do you have a method to what you're doing today? Or are you just walking around on all the machines? How many of y'all for real, for real don't be knowing what y'all doing with the machines? Just be like, look, I just. And then you be telling people, I worked out today. No, you. <laughs> your heart rate went up today, but you ain't going to see no progress unless you put a system to the time you invested. There's a system. That's why you know people, and there's always a few people in a little notepad, and they got a big thing of water, and they drinking water, and some of their water look pink, and you be like, where the devil did you get that water from? But they have a system, right? And some of us know that, that it isn't doing the system. You can't lift heavy weight and try to be shred season. They be like, I'm trying to get a six-pack. Then why are you lifting 189 pounds? I'm, I'm lifting 100 by itself. Because you recognize that shredding is not about how much you lift, but the repetitions that you do. Systems. There's some of us that go to the gym and we're trying to get bigger. Some of y'all need to stop getting bigger. Y'all just can't fit none of y'all clothes no more. Y'all just need to stop. <laughs> Looks abnormal. But you go to the gym and you lift heavy weight. Why? Because you are operating in a system to produce certain results. So here's Jesus teaching us the kingdom system will produce power based on what you operate in. But then not only power, but then glory. We talked about glory two weeks ago. Glory is the atmosphere in which his power can be revealed. Because you can have all the systems, but if you don't bring in the right pieces, if you don't bring God's presence into the process, then you can be doing the right things and still get the wrong results. So he tells us, honor the, the kingdom. Go down is the kingdom which produces power, which produces the right atmosphere. Amen. So I need systems to produce power. And when I put my systems with the presence and the power of God, then glory is revealed or atmosphere is created in which change can happen in my life. So let's understand that Jesus is trying to create glory when he's introducing kingdoms. Say it again. What Jesus is trying to do whenever he's traveling, he's going to all these cities, all these towns. He's trying to create atmospheres in which his power can be revealed. How do we know that? Because he even tells us in certain places he could do no miracles, right? Why? Because they refuse to embrace the systems. So what does Jesus do? He says, I, I can do no work here. I can, my glory can't be revealed here because they refuse to honor the system. They, they refuse to tap into the power that I'm trying to bring to their life. What system have you been ignoring and then complaining about a lack of power. What, what system have you chosen to just say, I don't, I don't need that? That's too much. It's asking a lot. But then you experience a lack of fortitude when trouble comes and emotionally you are falling apart because you have no power to deal with what life brings. So here's Jesus teaching us. Now, let me give you a little bit of context. Can I give you a little bit of background real quick? A little bit of background. A little bit of background. Uh, you got to understand a few things about Jesus' context in the beginning. Uh, uh, most of us don't understand that Christianity or the following of Christ was less than 1% of the population at the time. Pagan traditions and other rituals and religions were more Chrysler or more prevalent in that day and time. So Christianity, uh, this, this concept of following Christ was very new. It was very rare. Less than 1% of the people that Paul and the Acts and the Apostles are teaching to, less than 1% of them had ever heard about this concept of kingdom principles, this, this, this new kingdom way of doing things. Less than 1%. 
Here's the other thing you got to understand. You got to understand this about Jesus, that he was not the only miracle worker. A lot of times when we look at Jesus from an American context, 2016, we think, oh, you know, I don't even, I don't understand why they wouldn't listen to Jesus. Well, there were other people who had done miracles too. There were other people who called down fire from the sky, Elijah. There were, there were people who, who, who rose people from the dead, Elisha. There were people who did things that people saw and they considered to be miracles. So, so Jesus wasn't the only one who they were following for that reason. Here's the other thing you got to understand. You got to understand that Jesus never communicated to impress but to impact. Ooh, that was tough about 12 of y'all. Because you think that people are going to be attracted to the kingdom by how many scriptures you quote. But really what they desire is not what you quote, but what you live. What they really want is the message of your life and not the message of your book. I, I love a quote that I heard by Francis Assisi, uh, Pope Francis Assisi, when I was in seminary his first year. And uh, he said, preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. Preach the gospel at all times. Preach the kingdom message at all times. But when necessary, use words. Which means I can communicate the message without my mouth. And here's what happens. Look at this, y'all. You got to understand this. Because sometimes I think the greatest challenge is we got to recognize that Jesus, they weren't just attracted to Jesus' miracles. They were attracted to Jesus' message. They wanted more than what he did. They were attracted to what in the world is he talking about? The, the, these, these principles, these practices, they are unfamiliar. They're foreign even. Why, what, what, is, what is this guy talking about? Foreign principles. And so here is we encounter Jesus in a conversation with a whole group of people. And, and, and all through chapter 13, he's teaching on kingdom. You can find, I believe, seven or eight different passages where he says the kingdom of heaven is light. The kingdom of heaven is light. And so what Jesus is trying to do is he's trying to help these people understand. He's not trying to impress them because if he was, he just said, look, man, let me, if, I, y'all, if I wanted y'all to listen to me, let me just do a miracle real quick. No, he says, I have a message that I want you to embody, a message that I want you to embrace. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk in parables. I'm going to talk in a way that impacts your life so you can understand this message. He says, hey, I want, I want you to understand this message. Let me impact you. Not, I'm not going to try to impress you. He's talking to them, this audience that's less than 1% of Christian, this audience that has never heard his principles and practices. And he, he uses this analogy of a woman making bread. Anybody like homemade bread? I'm talking about like grandmama butter bread. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Sunday afternoon bread. I'm talking about take a nap, eat bread, go back to sleep, eat it again bread. I'm talking... I'm talking put Popeye's to shame bread. I'm talking about walking red lobster and be like, you don't got nothing on my grandmama bread. I'm talking about bread. Whew, my Lord. I got excited thinking about it. You know, he uses this passage. Bread was a common dish. It was something that they made regularly uh, in in this particular day and time. And and they they would make this bread and they would form it. You got to understand that what Jesus is trying to accomplish here, he's trying to teach these people how to be a part of this society. Like the responsibility of the believer is that we are supposed to be like yeast. And we're going to talk about why that's significant in just a moment. But he's trying to teach them that our goal, our assignment, our responsibility as those who now understand this message is to now be a part of community and not disconnect it from it. We are now supposed to help make the bread. Here's the greatest danger, one of the greatest enemies of kingdom message. Hear this, and we're going to move. Kingdom enemy, number one. Everybody say number one. Is that when the kingdom focuses so much on isolation that we don't focus on impact. Some of us have grown up in context, let's be honest, where the kingdom concept has been to isolate, not to integrate. So we get saved, and then we won't talk to nobody no more. I gave my life to Christ. Well, why are you even picking up the phone? Because I, I, well, you and me are just not, we're unequally yoked. Now, granted, I'm not saying, please hear me today. Use wisdom, use judgment. You got to know where you are. But I believe that one of the greatest enemies has become we are so focused on being isolated that we can't have an impact. Because the people who need us to be around them the most we're afraid to hang out with. 
Hello? The, the, people, the people who are desperate and, and, and distraught, the people who are questioning God, people who are afraid of church, the people who said, I don't even know if this God thing is real, those people don't need you to be like, oh, well, you know, huh, I love Jesus, so. No, 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 what they need is a kingdom message that can have a kingdom impact in their life. The only thing that kingdom isolation does is ensure that we all look real churchy together. But kingdom impact is about how do we get into this thing. And so here's what Jesus is trying to communicate to us. He says, I need the kingdom to start understanding its responsibility to get into some stuff. Not to get away from it, but to get into some stuff. Because if just a few of you at your job can get into some stuff, if, if just a few of you in your family can get into some stuff, if, if just a few of you in your neighborhood can get into some stuff, if just a few of you in your school can get into some stuff, it only takes a little bit, but it'll spread throughout the entire community. It, 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 it's like yeast. It'll spread. I, I need some people who want something to spread. I need some people who want something more than just church on Sunday. But they want a community that is so desperate for the church that they say, I can't get there, but can y'all bring a church to me? Can, 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 can you bring a communion to me? Can you, can you bring a sermon to me? Can you meet me for lunch? Can you meet me? I'm not afraid of what you bring. This message I need in my life. Three things that we got to understand about the yeast today, and I'm going to be done. Three things we got to understand about the yeast. Jesus uses his word very strategically. He, he uses his word very strategically based on the biblical times. They would make bread often, and, and, and there were several components, but no component more important than the yeast. Now, what's interesting here is the word yeast actually would have been translated in original language or in original text. Leaven bread, leaven bread or unleavened bread with the two types of bread. And you got to understand something that the first thing that he's trying to get them to understand about their responsibility is that kingdom representatives are supposed to rise. Everybody say rise. Say it a little bit louder. Say rise. rise. Say it one more time. Say rise. rise. You are not created to be on ground level. You, you are not created to be petty. <laughs> Hello. Everybody heard that? You are, not, you are not created for Facebook wars. Hello? You, you are not created for Twitter battles. Hello? You, you, you are not created to be, be, be so sensitive and frustrated that, that you can't go places no more where, the, where Jesus wants to impact that place with the kingdom, but you can't go because somebody hurt your feelings. You the one talking about, I'm supposed to go there, but oh, they're going to be there. And while you're refusing to go integrate, while you're isolating yourself, you are refusing to make impact with the kingdom. The kingdom is not created to be lowly and, and death. We're not created for base levels. So you're created to rise. He uses the word yeast. It was leaven bread. Leaven was the substance that created the bread's rising. He said, I didn't create you to be on the floor. I created you to be a I didn't create you to be a driver. I created you to be a fly. I created you for a certain altitude. I created you to rise. So what will happen? Can I, can I break down the bread for y'all for just a moment? The leavened bread was interesting. It was very interesting. Very interesting. Because what they would do was, 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 was they would put together the yeast. And you, as you know, a yeast is an organic fungus that would grow. And so what they would do is they would take the flour, they would do it in the water, and they would mix it together. And, the, and then the flour and the water would mix together, but, but it still wasn't ready to rise until so they set it outside and let the yeast get involved with it. And then when the yeast got involved with it, it started rising. But here's what they found out very early on, that, that once they found a good batch of bread with the yeast in it that helped it rise, they would save a piece of it. So that when they started cooking or baking the next batch, they had what was called a starter. Everybody say a starter. Say it one more time. Say a starter. So in biblical times, a starter would be a piece of something that was a part of a good batch. It was, it was a piece of something that was part of a good batch. And so then when it's time to grow something else, something grow something new, they would take a piece of the good batch and put it over here with the new thing that was growing. So, so, so the reason why they would, would be afraid of the leavened bread, watch this, because it took more work. Because, see, the unleavened bread was easy. 
just mix the flour with water, just and bake it a little bit, you're good. But it didn't rise as high. So what they would do is they said, you know, let's do the unleavened bread sometimes because the unleavened bread is easier. But the leavened bread, here's the key, it's connected to something that worked in the past. The reason some of us can't start rising is because we haven't realized that our past wasn't created to kill us, but it was a thing that was going to partner with us to rise. And you got to start getting to a place where you're not afraid of your mistakes and you're not afraid of your issues and you're not afraid to walk in church and say, I ain't been perfect and I done made some stuff happen, but it's what I did in my past that's going to partner with my present to take me up to where God has created me to go. He said, I got a starter for you. Some of y'all think your starter is church. No, your starter is the pain that you went through. Some of you think your starter is a sermon, but your starter is the stuff that you did, and then you're going to connect with somebody in your next season that needs that starter. They're going to need to know you made it through, baby. They're going to need to know that you made some mistakes. They're going to need to know that I struggled too. They're going to need to know that you can take this from this good batch and put it in your job and put it in another place, and it's going to help some stuff rise. They need a starter. The church Sunday service is about creating starters. A, a good batch so that when you go out, you can then be connected with another batch and help it. The kingdom, he said, he said you, you, you're supposed to be like yeast. You're supposed to be like the thing that helps stuff rise. Here's the second thing. Can I give you the second thing? Second thing, second thing is, though, you also got to understand what Jesus is trying to articulate is the yeast helps the bread to recover. Everybody say recover. Say it one more time. Say recover. Understand this. Recovery is something that, 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 that nobody really talks about. Because recovery happens in the middle. See, see most, most processes start with excitement and end with testimony. Most of us, most of us, if we be honest, you know, we, we, we went into a surgery maybe. And we started off with excitement because we knew the promises that were going to be made. And you're going to have a surgery and, you know, you're going to be better and you're going to feel great. You're going to be more mobile, you're gonna be more flexible. And, and then, and then we, we love the end, right? People show back up to church or they, or they show back up to work or they show back up to the next event. They're like, you know, you're good from the surgery. Yeah, you know, you're back on my feet, you know, feeling good. But that time in between, that recovery time, that, 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 that process is always invisible. Recovery is never as public. Recovery is always the thing that happens in the dark. Recovery is always the thing that happens in the privacy of your home but it is the most essential part of the process. Because if you rush the recovery, you rush the reward. You, you, you can't really experience the beauty of what God is trying to do if you rush the recovery. Some of us ha have been dealing with deep hurts and deep pains and deep struggles and deep, deep, deep challenges. And, and, and the greatest temptation we have is to rush the recovery. Okay, can I go talk about the bread for just a second one more time? So what they would do is they make the bread, right? And you got to understand, after the bread has started rising, they would take it out of a heated place and do something called kneading. Now, I just, am, can I tell y'all, can I be honest with y'all? Can I just take a side note and tell y'all when I learned what kneading was? At the nail shop. Don't judge me. Let me finish the whole story. Let me finish the whole story. Let me finish the whole story. So, so I had never... Got a, you know, uh, uh, Manny Petty. Did I say it right? Manny Petty. Okay, quick. Don't judge me. I see all the fellas looking at me judging me. Don't judge me. Some of y'all then got talked into getting the Manny Petty too before. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I went. I went. I had never got one. Actually, I got my first one when I got married. My granddaddy was like, you're not going to embarrass the name of the Gordons. You're going to go. <laughs> so we went. And, 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 you know, you sit in these chairs. For, those, for the fellas who've never done it, for the fellas who've never done it, if, if you've never done it, let me tell you something. When, when they convince you to do it, they're going to get you one. They're going to get you one. You sit in these nice chairs. And uh, 
<laughs> and they get these little buttons. And like, you can get a little massage while everything going on. Now, be honest, y'all. How many of y'all be looking at all the buttons up there? Be like, I don't even know what half this stuff means. I'm just pressing buttons. Like, I don't like that. I don't like the way that felt on my back. I don't like that. So finally, I found something I like. It, it said kneading. Kneading is it, it, not super rough, but, but, but it's aggressive enough to work through, they say, the, 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 the knotted places in your life. It, 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 it's, it's not too much, but it's aggressive enough to work through some of the, the places that, that need a little bit more pressure and a little bit more stretching and a little bit more straining to get you to a healthier place. Kneading kind of felt kind of good. I got out of the chair. I forgot I was there getting my mani petty. I, I felt real good. Don't judge me when I say that every time. I see y'all looking at me funny. I, I, I said, I kind of like this kneading. And when I looked at the bread process, it was very similar. They would knead down the bread. So it would rise, but then they would knead it down. They would apply pressure and, and punch it a little bit and push it a little bit. And, and I couldn't understand why if something has already risen, why if it's gotten to a better place, why would you beat it back down? And some of you have been asking God the same question. God, I thought we were good. And God, I thought I was moving forward. And God, I thought I was progressing. And God, I thought things were looking up. And God, I thought this was working out. But now it seems like I'm taking two steps backwards. And now it seems like I'm falling again. What is going on? Watch this. When they were making the bread, they would take it. And after they needed it, they would stretch it to the sides. They weren't putting it down. They were just expanding its capacity. See, sometimes what God is trying to do when you go through the process of recovery, you, you've been hurt and, and you've been struggling and you've been challenged and things didn't work out. He's stretching you because this time when you rise, you would have been just high, but now your territory is expanding, and now you're going to have a greater reach, and now you're going to be able to touch some stuff over here that you couldn't reach, and now you're going to touch some stuff over here. He said, what I'm doing is I'm just expanding what you're capable of. I'm, I'm going to do some things to help you recover so that when you rise, he said, I'm stretching you. I'm, I'm not putting you down. I'm expanding but I can't expand you while you're up high. Sometimes I got to bring you back here so I can place. Come on up here, Rivers. I got I to gotta put some pressure in some places. I got to challenge some places. Come on up here, Rivers. I got I to gotta, I gotta move some stuff out the way. I got to pull some stuff because the kingdom is in desperate need of you to be expanded. I don't need you just high. I need you high and wide. <laughs> I need you. I need your reach. I need your reach to expand. I need it to expand. It's part of the recovery process. What's happening is when the bread is, molecules are broken down, the molecules are broken down, and, and during the recovery process, what, what, what kneading is doing is it's recovering what was lost in the rise and bring it together and stretching it again, stretching it again and stretching it again. Can I, can I, can I, can I give you all the last point real quick? Can I give you all the last point real quick? Because, because not only... Was he trying to help them understand? Jesus is talking to these people. He says, I know y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Let me talk in words that you can understand. I want to teach you about the kingdom. The kingdom is about impact. So I don't want you just isolated. I want you in the mix. I want you in the struggle. So here's what I first want you to understand. You are designed to rise, and everything around you is designed to rise. I didn't put you in that community. I didn't put you in that initiative. I didn't put you at that job so you could just be there and just stay stagnant. I, I want you to help some stuff rise. So, and, but, but, but don't get discouraged. When it seems like things aren't happening right. And don't, don't get discouraged when it seems like you're falling apart. Don't, don't, don't get discouraged when, when God puts some pressure on some places. Don't, don't get discouraged when it seems like you're being stretched beyond your capacity. Because what I'm doing is I'm expanding you. I'm, I'm, I'm making you have a greater capacity. It's a part of the recovery process so that you can be mobile and flexible and ready to do something greater. Don't be mad at the recovery. There's going to be some tough nights. Don't be mad at the recovery. It's going to be some lonely days. Don't be mad at the recovery. It's going to be some mad days. Don't be mad at the recovery. But I'm doing all that. But, 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 but he helps them to understand this. Watch this. It all matters most when you remember. Everybody say remember. Say remember. Say remember. Okay, catch this. 
because the bread still has to go through the process again. Then if the bread is afraid, if the, if the bread is afraid, say, somebody say afraid. If the bread is afraid to go through the process again, then it will stay where it was needed. If they never put it back in the heat, if it never is reminded of its purpose, if it's never reminded of its potential, if it's never reminded of its capacity, then it will stay stuck when it is supposed to go higher. So watch this. I need you to understand. Look at your neighbor and say, remember. No, no, no. No, you got to be a little bit louder than that. Say, remember. One more time to the person behind you because they're real afraid right now. Say, remember, because they never heard a baby cry. So say, remember. Remember. Remember what? Remember you were originally created to rise. See, he helps them to understand something. He says, you are the yeast. The kingdom is not supposed to stay on the ground. The kingdom is supposed to rise. And then even when it goes through a tough time and even when it goes through a struggle, not only do you recover, but then you have to remember what you were created for. One of the greatest tragedies in the kingdom right now we have is people who've been broken and they can't recover. And so they don't remember what God created them for in the first place. So they tried their dream once, but they said never again. And they tried to make it work once and they said never again because they could not remember what their original design was. The bread does not just stay needed. Its molecules are reformed and restructured for what purpose? So that it can rise again, but it has to remember what it was created for. How many of us are missing out on the fullness of joy and walking in the kingdom because we forgot what we were created for? How many of us are walking around in depression because we forgot what we were created for? How many of us are walking around in insecurity because we forgot what we were created for? How many of us are walking around angry and bitter and broken because we forgot what we were created for? And you got to get to a place in your life where you start saying, you know what, I'm not going to allow the recovery stage of my life to keep me in a state of depression and struggle and bitterness and pain. I am created to rise. And so I got to remember what God did in my life. I got to remember what God intended to do. And I got to get back to the level that he called me to. Some of you have been afraid to try again. I came to let you know today you got to remember what you were created for. Some, some of you have said, I, I don't want to do that again, but I came to let you know today, you got to remember what you were created for. Jesus says the yeast is the most essential part of this journey. I need you to understand the yeast is there to help people remember. You're going to encounter people this week who have given up on life. They've given up on hope. They've given up on relationships. They've given up on friends. They've given up on family. And you got to remind them to remember who they were created to be. We, we are not supposed to be so isolated that when God puts us in a place, we are called to be like yeast and spread and help that thing rise and recover and remember. Some of you are married to somebody that you need to remind who they've been called to be. Some of you are friends with somebody that you need to pull to the side and say, I just want you to remember who God called you to be. Some of you, it's yourself that you need to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm just reminding you of who you are called to be. Say, remember, the yeast is permeated through the entire dough. And all it took was a little change, a little shift, a little adjustment. And what came from it was a revolution. What revolution is God trying to start with you? What, what, what revolution is waiting on you to be like? The kingdom is like yeast. What re revolution is waiting on you to insert yourself? What, what are you the starter for? What are you the starter for? If you could stand on your feet all over the room.